despite what Tropical Storm Melissa looks like on the satellite, it is a major, potentially catastrophic threat to islands in the Caribbean, including and especially Jamaica, but also parts of other islands as well. All right, let's take a look at the uh, current information and the satellite there. 45 mile hour winds is the estimate. Now that's actually down a little bit, but that's misleading because still uh, the whole overall picture that we see is an indication of the uh, overall atmospheric pattern becoming more conducive for strengthening and uh, system becoming more uh, threatening to these islands. Look at this, barely moving north northwest at two miles per hour. So drifting up this way, it's getting yanked a little bit north uh, today. A thousand three millibars is the pressure right now. Now, what's changed today is that yesterday, there's the center of the National Hurricane Center is uh, marking down, and that's because hurricane hunters have been out there and uh, trying to locate it. Now, it's not exactly clear where the center is because as you'll see it's kind of stretched out but let's say that's it uh, yesterday all of the thunderstorms were over here to the east of the center because hostile upper level winds blowing into the system like this pushing everything over tilting it over and that's been keeping it from intensifying even though it's over very very warm water there in the Caribbean. Well, the thinking is that those winds are letting up some because now we're seeing clusters of thunderstorms near the center here, and that is normally part of the development process. We expect to see a stronger, more developed system and eventually a hurricane out of this. And this out here will probably turn into an outer band that will indeed threaten these other islands on the edges of this eventual uh, more significant circulation. Well, that's the thinking right now. Let's look at it close up here. This is a, vis a visible picture. In other words, this is what you could see looking down from space, like a camera in space. There you see that elongated center as analyzed by the European computer model. And you can see up here where the winds are the tightest. So we look at these lines where they're grouped the tightest. That's where the strongest winds are right in there. So the thinking is that the center is going to develop in this northern end of this elongated area. Uh, that's the expectation, but, but we'll see. But the main thing is that this is pulling the moisture up this way, as you'll see here when we look at the moisture display on the uh, from the computer model. But where are the strongest winds right now? Hurricane Center actually maps that out. And so what you see is there all kind of to the east or northeast of the nominal center. And that's because those upper level winds pushing in like this, kind of tilting the whole thing over. But if they are letting up, which the indications from the satellite are that they are, then we'll see this fill in and become more like a donut uh, with time, of course. That's the way we normally see these systems work. All right, so now when we look at the moisture, because the moisture is going to be a big deal part of this. Yes, the winds will be important too, but the winds are only important if the system gets really close to the island so that the band of strongest winds in the uh, hurricane are affecting the island. But the moisture expands out much uh, farther, and the moisture as it interacts with the mountainous islands can be just deadly, as we've seen over and over again. So the dark green here on this uh, model representation from the European model shows you how the moisture is feeding up and around this way. It's already getting moist in uh, Jamaica, uh, but it's not, uh, from a catastrophic standpoint, it's not that way yet. But also, this band is coming up here in toward the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and over here, Puerto Rico is just on the edge of it. Also, we'll mention the Cayman Islands, you see, just up here to the north. They're going to get in it, but uh, as it looks right now, they probably won't get the worst of it, but boy, it's going to be close. So here we are today, and there's the circulation that we have. So now watch as we go forward in time through the weekend. It just crawls a little bit north, and then it kind of hangs to the left, 
and just tracks to the south of Jamaica. So it's pounding moisture into the tall mountains that are 78,000 foot mountains in Jamaica. So what happens is the mountains catch the moisture kind of like a sail and then it all runs downhill into the rivers and streams and creeks and, and drainage areas. And of course you can get landslides and uh, all kinds of terrible things that can happen. So that's Sunday, that's three days from now. So that moisture feed just picks up as the system intensifies. Notice now it's circular, thinking is by Sunday, this is going to be a hurricane, uh, potentially category four hurricane. Yes, it could get stronger in Monday, on Monday and Tuesday, maybe even a category five, strong category four. We're open to all those possibilities. And then look at it Monday. And here we go to Tuesday. And it's still right in the vicinity of Jamaica here. So the angles change. So remember that the moisture starts coming this way. So it affects, it's caught by the eastern side of the mountains. And then you go through the weekend, it switches more to the south. And now it's the south side of the mountains. So that's where the heaviest rain is. That's where the drainage uh, issues are, the rivers and so forth that can, can, can cause so much trouble as all that water comes uh, downstream to the ocean. So there's where we are Tuesday, and that's as far as the National Hurricane Center forecast. So now let's look at their official forecast. We put a line down the middle of the cone. We don't normally do that uh, because we want people to look at the whole cone and say, okay, there's this possibility of a wide range. But because the cone is so smushed, because this system is moving so slowly, we put the line down the middle so you can kind of tell uh, what direction things are indeed going here. So here's the thinking. As it moves slowly to the north, which we see it's doing now, it becomes tomorrow morning, a, it starts intensifying, starts the process. 60 mile an hour storm nominally tomorrow morning. And then hurricane by Saturday morning, as it gets up, it begins to make that turn to the left that we saw in the model. There's a reasonably high consensus it'll do that. We'll look at the models in a second. And then hurricane category two by Saturday evening. So that uh, rapid intensification process starts on Saturday, continues Sunday as the system, it gets very close to Jamaica, plus or minus, maybe over the island, hopefully farther south. So you see the cone widens out, obviously, we have that uncertainty, but this intensification process begins Saturday and really accelerates Sunday, and I think it's gonna continue into Monday and Tuesday. Hurricane Center forecast for that time shows Monday and Tuesday, category four hurricane, but look at it, right in the vicinity of Jamaica. So if it takes that track, then the winds come around like this and they're gonna be slamming that island with the angle changing as it gets over here. And then the winds come around like this. But we're talking about the entire island being affected here. The, the big cities that you know, uh, Kingston is on this side, Montego Bay is on that side up there and they are all going to get it. So this is as far as the Hurricane Center forecast. They go out five days, but with the models, we can go uh, farther than that, as you saw. Here is the Google DeepMind AI model that has been uh, so uh, successful this year, our first time looking at this. And you see it says what we saw. So you can see this cluster all in here. That's because it's moving slowly to the north and then this trend to the west and then turning on off uh, to the northeast. So very similar timing in the vicinity of Jamaica, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but especially Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and intensifying, and then moving out on Wednesday and gone by Thursday. Yes, the Cayman Islands are on the fringe here, but there's very, very low odds. The way you look at this, there's about 2% odds, or are 2% odds based on the model for every line. So you can see, to get it in the Cayman Islands here, you're in the single digits percentage wise. Uh, same story over here in terms of the center, but that doesn't say anything about the moisture, of course, but this is in terms of the center where the strongest winds are going to be. By far, the highest odds are up in here, and we'll look at the average of all these here in just a moment. And here you see, we look at the European, that's in red, and the GFS, that's in yellow. The GFS puts a little more over here, but the European is similar to the Google AI that's in this area up in here where, the, uh, where it turns to the north. So again, 
the Cayman Islands are on the edge of it. Again, with the European, 2% odds per line. So we're down in the single digits in terms of a direct impact in the Caymans, but we're way up in terms of uh, Jamaica and a little more for the Haiti Peninsula here. That's why Hurricane Watch is in effect for the Tiburon Peninsula there in Haiti and then also in uh, Jamaica. All right, now when we look at the average of the typical models that we've looked at for years, the European, the GFS, and a few other what are called dynamic models or science-based models, they, it takes it north and then left toward Jamaica and then off to the northeast on the timing pretty much that we've been talking about. Now the Google AI model is similar but takes it north a little less and then again very close to Jamaica and then northeast which is of course what the hurricane center is uh, indicating in their forecast. So based on everything we know this is going to be uh, uh, increasing winds in Jamaica late Saturday and then uh, full-fledged hurricane interacting with that island with the torrential rain and uh, the in incredible winds, category three, four, maybe uh, certainly gusting to category five at least for three days, uh, uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. All right, so and, and then we have the rain issue. Look at this. Here you can see where the, the rain areas are, Puerto Rico getting fringed here, uh, two to four inches, which can cause issues in Puerto Rico. So stay in touch with the National Weather Service uh, San Juan office there. They'll keep you up to date. And then the southern part of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Let's look at that close up here because where you see the purples, and you can't uh, look at the exact <clears throat> areas here, but whenever you see purples here, you're talking about in the two to three feet of water range. And in Jamaica, you see some purples in there. You see generally in the one to two foot range uh, over Jamaica, just based on the forecast we have right now. And obviously it can go uh, up and down a little bit, but still tremendous uh, rainfall here, catastrophic rainfall uh, is forecast now across these islands. What's driving this whole thing? Well, it's the jet stream. Right now we have this dip in the jet stream here. There's the National Hurricane Center forecast. That's what the icon is. This is the European computer model spin in the atmosphere. So more or less line up uh, right now today. This dip is what is just nudging it north. It's a weak dip. So that's why the thing has started to just nudge to the north. Okay, here we go forward in time. And look at that. It moves north a little bit. That dip moves away. It starts going west as a little high pressure builds over top of it. There you can see when we get to Tuesday here, the model and the, and the hurricane center forecast are similar. Model's a little farther south, but they're very close. And now when we go forward in time, remember the hurricane center forecast only goes to that point, so it's gonna stop, but the model will go forward. And there you see Wednesday, storm is moving up over uh, Eastern Cuba plus or minus, as we saw with all those possibilities, and then zooming out on uh, Thursday and is out of the picture. So uh, this is by all measure of everything we, we know, even if it's a little plus or minus this way or that way, there's just no reason to think this isn't going to be just horrendous for a number of those islands, uh, primarily Jamaica, but the southern peninsula at least of Haiti, parts of the southern part of the Dominican Republic, watching it closely in the Caymans, but probably on the weaker side, but uh, significant effects in Cuba and the Bahamas. Uh, certainly it looks like a catastrophe in the making.